Yeah, managing... no, no, we know what you do. We know we what you do. We all, we all pay for... No, hold on a second. We all pay for what you do. We know what, what, what you do, and you are valued. Um, that's, that's, that's not the point. Where is the next step going to be taken in the right direction? All we hear about is the, the wrong direction and, and conflict. What needs to happen next from your point of view? It's very simple. What we've wanted all along was to have an open and honest conversation with our government in a meaningful and positive way. Uh, we had a series of negotiations in May after months of being uh, ignored. And unfortunately, in that time, all the government felt prepared to do was put forward an offer of 5%. And this is actually at a time, at least in the latter parts of the negotiation, when they knew fully that this supposedly independent pay review body, which they we've heard that they rig anyways, had recommended an uplift of between 8 to 10%. So it shows that our government has not been dealing in good faith, even when we thought they were in negotiations. And that's all we want to do, because as soon as they can put a credible offer on the table that we can take back to our members, we can cancel this strike that we've got going on at the moment and don't ever need to strike again. Dr Trevady, junior doctors in Scotland called off a planned strike last month, a new pay offer from the SNP-led government, 12.4% pay increase next year, 4.5% increase this year. So, uh, admitting there's a little bit of compounding there, you're talking about a 17% increase over two years. Would you put that to, uh, to, to your membership so what we've seen is a difference in the approach by the government. Now, our government has refused to negotiate with us when we had strikes on the table, which is completely separate, uh, different to what we saw um, with our colleagues uh, over the north. And the difference in what their deal is compared to what we've been uh, offered as well is that there is at least some commitment to review pay in the ongoing years. Now, our current government have already shown that they cannot be trusted with this. So you work with the SNP attitude, but not with the, the, the uh, Westminster government? I would work with any government that will show a commitment to finding a route to pay restoration. The, the current government is not... But going you're not going to get pay restoration because that's 35%. That's what you're asking. I mean, you're simply not going to get that. So that's unrealistic, right? Well, we're asking for a doctor who's paid £14 an hour to be paid £20 an hour. Rishi Sunak... But that's not going to happen. You're not going to get 35%. You know that. So can we just get over that? The independent pay review I, body... I refuse a to accept that because I don't see that why we w shouldn't be able to structure a deal over a number of years, which is what we I proposed, see. by the way, in negotiations for doctors who are working in hospitals, treating loved ones, part of teams that restart patients' uh, hearts when they've stopped. You know, assessing patients. Yeah, managing, no, no. We know what you do. You know, we know what you do. We all, we all pay hour. for. No, hold on a second. We all pay for what you do. We know what what, what you do, and you are valued. Um, that's 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 not the point. I'm just trying to work out whether or not what I'm reading here with the junior doctors in Scotland and your co-chair, Dr. Lawrenson, said that, um, you know, he, he, he wouldn't accept the kind of deal that the SNP-led government in Scotland have offered because the governments are very different. The Scottish government has a basis to work forwards and have a working relationship to, to negotiate in the future. And, and look, the health secretary, Steve Barclay, has said their mask has slipped. You know, people beginning to feel like you're playing politics and they Absolutely don't like not. it. So, uh, I understand what you're saying, and I'll just try and rephrase what I'm trying to say. Okay. I have no idea what the Scottish government is like because I've never had to interact with them. Well, have, have you spoken to Dr. Lawrenson? Yes, I speak yes, to I'm, him. I'm sure he's your co so, so I speak to, uh, But I do have an idea of how our government acts, and I know how, you know, in bad faith that they have shown to act both with our predecessors in the BMA and my team that have been discussing with them. So what we would want is something more robust from them, contractual, obliging them to commit them to full pay restoration. If they're able to do that, and that would look like a credible offer, we would happily take that to our members. But they have refused to do that. And more so just to highlight that they refuse to negotiate with us when we have strikes on the table, which is at a complete odds to what's happening in Scotland. Look, we've got doctors who have graduated after university who've just started last week. They've got 80 to 100,000 pounds of debt 
most of them have been shipped across but, the but, country. Yeah, I know, but you only you pay know, that. You only pounds an hour. A lot of people graduate into very proper jobs and 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 have to pay that money back, but only after a certain point. I've forgotten the exact amount. It is. Look, you know, you can't be using that 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 argument. Most student loans don't get paid back. Seventy percent of it doesn't get paid back at all. You get tremendous pension contributions from the government. You are valued members of society. You are, of course, highly educated. It's cost a lot of money. Money to educate you, you're asking for 35% and you're not going to get it. I'm just wondering, you know, you don't like the independent pay review body. You think Steve Barclay's a horror story. I mean, what, 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 where's it going from here? People are frustrated. People are waiting for hips and, and appointments and lungs and God knows what, you know. And that's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. Yeah, so if Steve Barkley or Rishi Sunak came back to the table and spoke to us, you know, meaningfully and constructively, then we wouldn't need to, to strike again. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Now, um, I just want to highlight another point that you were talking about, about progression. You know, you talk, you're short. Doctors, when they start, earn £14 an hour. But progression in the NHS as a doctor is not automatic. There are rigorous exams, there's competencies that must be met, and there's personal costs that are, have to be undertaken to progress. It, it's not guaranteed. And even the most You've got great way. job security and you're tremendously valued. You've got unbelievable even, even pensions. No, I'm just senior, saying that it's a good... Even at the most senior end of, of being a, a junior doctor, doctors who've earned, who've worked for 10 years and usually at a more than full-time rate because an, an average work week is 44 hours a week, but a lot of doctors are working up to 48 hours a week for, for 10 years. These are doctors who are going to be doing incredible things like heart surgery, brain surgery, complex medical clinics, treating cancer care patients. They're currently paid £28 an hour. And the simple fact is that they are not valued. They don't feel valued. And there are other places in the world that are willing to value them. And how many people, how many people, have, how, places yeah, like I, Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, well, I do hear this. Not want oh. to do anything, how anything, old, anything in our power to retain those highly yeah, skilled uh, right. doctors. I like understand the frustration and I'm a little bit late here, but and I, I, I've, got to, I've got to get personal with you because we're speaking, you know, man to man. How old are you? I'm 31. Why are, you st what, why are you still here? Because I believe there is a future that medicine can thrive again and that we can go back to uh, an NHS where we're able to provide high quality care. We're not there at the moment and we're definitely on a downward trajectory. But mm. if we had enough investment into our workforce to be able to build it back, then we can get back there and I'm willing to fight for that. If I was you, and I assume you're not married, don't have children, commitments are still... Oh, you are married, okay, fine. Well, I would go to Australia. I've got, to be, I've got to be honest with you, I sympathise with you enormously and your generation. And I have to confess, I think you are being vastly underpaid. I do think that you are valued by public, if not the government. But I would go. I'd be looking all over the place now. I have a huge sympathy. I know we've just had a bit of a semi-scrap, but I, I, I'm, I am with you. But I don't think you're going to get your 35 percent, that's all. I uh, Thank you for your support. It's something I've thought about many times. M may have to think about more strongly in the future. But for now, like I said... I think that there is a future that I'd be happy with in the NHS in the UK. So I'm going to do all I can to try and get to that. Let's have a row again sometime. It's good <laughs> talking to you. Take Looking care of yourself. All the best. Dr. Vivek Trevedi, co-chair of the BMA's Junior Doctors Committee.